training the trainer. The mission of Jesus and the purpose for Jesus coming to the earth is to train the trainer. Or we can say it like this, he came to make disciples. Your responsibility is to be a light, an example, amen, to those who cannot find the light or have not found the light. We are all been blessed with supernatural blessings on our life. But if you don't know that, or if you don't live in the spirit realm, if you don't walk in the spirit, if you're not led of the spirit, then you won't understand spiritual things that have been provided for you. But, but understand now that once you do come into the knowledge of spiritual things, you have to understand that there's going to be a fight. All right? And that's why the Bible teaches us to fight the good fight of what? Faith, because it's gonna be a fight. You gotta understand, as I said Friday night, the struggle is real. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with has mean past tense, or have had past tense, which means that the blessing has already been there. Everything that you're gonna ever need to be successful in this life has already been provided. Amen? Has already been given, has already been made. God is not making anything new because you're facing something today. You act like, you know, oh, Father, you know I'm going through this. He said, I knew that before you, before you were born. He said, I prepared a path for you, and on this path, I prepared everything for you. But what I've been doing, I've been waiting on you to get in position, and not just waiting for you to get in position, I've been waiting for you to stay consistent in position. Because see, what, what will happen, we'll run this race for so long, and because of some issues or some things that happens in our life, we be, begin to deviate to the left and right. And when you deviate to the left and right, it prolongs what God has already established for your life. Amen? That's why you always want to be in the will of God. All right? I'm on track if I'm in the will of God. Well, how do you know if you're in the will of God? Spending time with God. Spending time with the Word. Spending time, you know, knowing uh, uh, what God has prepared for you according to His Word. Again, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, but acknowledge him in all thy ways, he shall direct your path. He already has a path already prepared for you to get on. Not to get off, but to stay on. Amen. And once you get on that path through prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost. We talked about that this morning. Praying in the Holy Ghost, because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost prays in your behalf for things that you know that you should be praying for that will help you line up with the will of God. Amen? Have you ever prayed and been stuck? Have you, have you ever prayed and been frustrated in your prayer? Have you ever prayed and seemed like God hasn't answered your prayer? Have you ever prayed and it seemed like God never heard your prayer? <laughs> right. So we all been through that process that we understand that, that God has already prepared some things for us, but if we gotta have faith enough to believe it and get on that course or get on that path because this scripture says, put it back up there, he said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. But the problem is, it's in heavenly places. Once I recognize that the kingdom is on the inside of me, then everything that God has promised, help me out somebody, it's in me. If all of my blessings are in heavenly places, everything that I need, everything that God created is in heavenly places, and then he turns around and say, the kingdom of God is within me, then that means that everything that God has planned is all on the inside of me. It's all up to me to draw all of those good things out of me. Well, how? how? Through prayer and fasting and confessions. But you gotta trust God that they're there. Why? Let's see what it says here. He says here, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. The next verse. According as he has what? Chosen us in him. When did he choose you? Before the foundation of the world. So the question is, when were you chosen? Does that mean that before there was even a world, you were already chosen? And if God chose you before the foundation of the world, don't you know that the God that made the world was considering you while he was making it? And he knew that you, had, you were in need of things 
to survive in this earthly realm so the God who predestinated you before the foundation of the world has already prepared some things. But here's what he said. He said, I put them in you. See, you've been, you've been searching for stuff and you've been trying to make things happen. And God said, no, he said, everything that's in, is in you all the time. All I need you to do is bring it out. You are one of the most powerful persons in the earth. You are one of the most successful people in the earth. You are people that can speak things into existence. You are people that can have what you say. You are people that will triumph over the, over the enemy. I'm telling you, you are the people of God. And the devil knows your ability. But the problem is, if you don't know your abilities, you're not going to tap into the source, oh, watch it now, of his divine nature that he has already placed on the inside of you, which would, would put you in the position to receive everything that God has for you. But if you don't understand that you're chosen, and if you don't understand that you were, you were made of God, and you were called of God before the foundation of the world, you will have some struggles in this life that God never intended for you to have.